Hey, brothers and sisters, I am so excited. I am so excited. The Lord is good all the time, and I have on the phone a friend, a new friend in Canada whose name is Andrea, and we are going to be doing recording her testimony, which I really think you're going to want to listen to. I've only seen just little bits of it in the um, in her comments, but amazingly enough, she called me at 109, and I'm a numbers person, and 109 in Strong's Concordance means air, caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will forever be with the Lord. It's in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, which is about the rapture. So she's going to be speaking in just a minute, but um, I wanted to catch it right up, you know, straight off from the phone call beginning so that you can hear this. And I wanted to pray at the beginning because that is a confirmation from the Lord. Thank you, Father, so much for being with us, Lord. We thank you so much, Father, for giving us the strength to endure another day. We pray that this recording will bless you, Father, bless you, the Son, Jesus Christ, and bless you, the Holy Spirit. We pray that it will be an encouragement to all of those who know you and are going through difficult times and just to hear the miracles of what you can do. I pray that it will be a blessing. I thank you for Andrea's willingness to uh, come, you know, come forth with this. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so Andrea, tell tell us where you're from. Hi, I'm from uh, Calgary, Alberta in Canada. It's right where the Rocky Mountains are. It's uh, We're just a little east of that, and it's a beautiful country. <laughs> oh, I bet it is. Bet it is. Yeah. And... Um, and then I'm trying to think of, and what is your, I forgot what your channel name is that when you made a comment. Hope for heaven is coming. Hope for heaven is coming. Boy, isn't that the truth? <laughs> and um, yes. just to get it off, straight off the bat of what, I, I, I want to make sure that we are in agreement. You you right. believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, right? I do. You believe that in the Trinity? Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> very much, and I, um, <laughs> very much so. <laughs> and you believe in the permanence of marriage, which is what we're going to be talking about. But did absolutely, I'm trying to think absolutely. of um, how did you how did you find my channel or how, how did I find you or you found me? I'm not really sure. But was it that you were watching videos on Let's Talk Bible with Shun S? That's right. That's right. And then you commented and then. And I was sharing a little bit in the comments about my personal experience with this um, divorce and remarriage. Oh, okay. And we went from there. <laughs> okay. And then Sean S. went off into, you know, uh, un un being a Unitarian or a, she says she's not oneness, oneness but she's oneness. She doesn't. She, she is did, oneness. She's oneness. And she did like three videos about about being oneness and I was like oh my goodness you know you can be right about divorce and remarriage but and she's got excellent videos about divorce and marriage but you cannot be you can't be wrong on the trinity <laughs> you know oh no oh, no. no but but yeah no I just so I stopped um listening to Sean S um when I knew she wasn't trinitarian so okay. I just I I usually when I find that out then I then I unsubscribe from that. Yeah. So, because that's, that's really mean. important. It's really that's important. Really important. Yeah, because uh -huh. you know, if, uh, you know, if you're not, if you're denying one, you're de you're denying all three of them, really. And the Holy Spirit wrote the new te wrote the whole Bible, not the New Testament. The Holy Spirit wrote the whole Bible, and yes. at the beginning, the Spirit hovered over the waters, and then God the Father and God the Son made man in our image and she just could not understand that i'm like it's straight up in the bible i don't understand how they can i don't know i don't understand that <laughs> yeah. i'm not i'm not that way so okay well that's great and so let's hear your story what happened 
Oh, um, well, I want to go back to when I actually, because I would be called the offending party. So I've been told by several people not to share my testimony because people would hate me and not want to hear my story. And so I've been kind of like, I'm, I'm the person that people would say, um, you know, you know, they would say, well, she's, she's the one that did it all and caused the divorce and did the adultery. And so, but I have been absolutely, yeah, I, I have been, I have been, I have been rescued and, um, like I've been taken from the dark pit of going the wrong direction and it is vital because I don't think I'm the only one that has fallen um, to this, uh, to being seduced and to being taken away into the, uh, into the pit of adultery. And so I, I just want to share because I know the Lord wants me to share my testimony, but I can't do it on my channel because of family members, I still have some family members that won't talk to me. Mm. So, and I don't want to hurt. Um, there's some private people in my family and, and I don't want to hurt them. So this is perfect to do this on, on your channel. And then I can share um, what the Lord has done because it's actually an amazing story. I, um, starting back in 2018, I was very much involved in the church. I was doing worship leading. Um, I'm a singer and I play keyboard and I raised my three children, um, in, in church and they were always thought they were always in the faith. And, uh, right now, after all that has happened, i my daughters no longer are in the faith. My son still is. And I'm praying for my girls to come back. And it's really, really sad, um, mm -hmm. tragic right now. But I'm believing for their rest restoration as well. Um, what happened was my, I did have, I don't want to, I don't want to um, uh, hurt my husband's testimony, like my husband's reputation. But we did have a rough marriage for many, many years. And I had built up a grudge against him. And yet I always said I would never, you know, never do adultery. I would never fall away. I would never do this. Be careful if you think that you're proud and you think that you're not going to fall. Because mm -hmm. then the, de the devil will come in and you will be tempted beyond what you can imagine mm -hmm. um, my my husband um, I was I was you know there's so many things I just don't want to go into the background how long, of how long had you been how, you said 2018 is when you started to fall how long had you started you, falling. how long had you been married well we were um, married in um, 89 so we were married 30 years before the divorce went through. Okay. And how so, long had you been, a, you said you were in worship and everything, but how long had you been a believer? Oh, I grew up in a family. Uh, I grew up in a strong Christian family, but I came to salvation on August 8th, 1974 at a Bible camp. Oh, okay. And that's when I gave my life to, and the interesting thing about that was they were showing the left behind video and I was so worried about being left behind I uh, I wanted to make that commitment to the Lord so I was nine and um, strangely enough too is that August 8th <laughs> is my my father-in-law's birthday my father-in-law who was in the church started the church um, and ended up not I don't, he did not make it to heaven. He died and he was one of these really strong leaders in a church. He was a deacon and everything, but he was never born again. And he did not, oh. he did not read the Bible. He did not hear from the Lord. And then when my husband ended up, um, you know, 
his adultery came forward, and I call it adultery. I, I mean, I call it what it is. It's not. A, it wasn't an affair. It was adultery. My father-in-law accepted it, and so did my mother-in-law. And they were like, "Oh, you know, you can be a Christian, but he's just a boy. You know, boys will be boys, and all of that." And so they ended up siding with their flesh and blood as opposed to standing for God and supporting me and my kids. Um, who were being sinned against. So anyway, but so you were married for 30 years and in 2018, uh, what, what, what just started? Cause really that's a long time. A lot of times it's usually around the 20 year mark that things start going south. Well, but. things were, things were really bad in, um, because on my husband's side, cause of substance abuse and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, that's, but I, I'm, I'm not here to blame him. I'm, I'm here to uh, say what I did. Um, I remained faithful in some really bad times. And so I thought, well, we'll never separate. You know, I, I never thought we would. But I had built up this grudge because of the substance abuse. And mm-hmm. so it was a foothold for the devil to use against me. Mm-hmm. And so it's very important that you um, don't have a grudge against your husband who is not living right, who's doing things that aren't right and that you feel hurt by. And it's important to not allow that to get into your spirit. Mm-hmm. I mean, cause I was having experiences with the Lord. I have one um, time right before this all happened where the Lord spoke to me in the car clear as audio is I I mean I don't know if it was out you know in my spirit or out loud or, and he said to me are you ready to go home to heaven soon so and I was so Whoa. filled with I just want to hear just the Lord like, speak to me again I, just I know got I, I was tingles so, when you said I loved that it. I loved it oh I, I, was just, I had such a close <laughs> and I was just like following you know i was i mean i was giving out tracks i was doing helping the poor and and uh, i i was i was strongly following the lord and it's but it's interesting i was prideful in myself too Hmm. and in my and in my flesh so the whole thing is is don't have a grudge and don't be strong in yourself you've got to give the lord um he has to be Lord. He can't be in your strength. It has to be in the Lord's strength. So what happened was my husband was out of town in, in the States, in Texas, for months and months and months. And I started looking online on Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> Yeah, and, I didn't do um, Facebook. <laughs> and and when I did a I, I did a selfie and and then I started getting all this attention and I had all of a sudden I had a flood of men writing me and I'm going what is this you know I was so shocked and and I was like you know lonely and starving for attention and I resisted for a long time but there was But someone got through, and Mm -hmm. I was really hooked on this one person. Mm -hmm. And he was unhappy in his marriage. I was unhappy in my marriage. And we said, you know, um, you know, when we're free someday, we'll get together. And we started to talk like that. And um, it just, it was something that got, I got hooked on, and I just couldn't let go of this guy. And my husband tried with all of his might. He found out about it. He found out on my phone that I was talking to someone. Mm-hmm. And he, uh, we went to counseling. We did everything. But I, I had already been seduced by, you know, in my emotions with this man. And I thought, you know, like all the, you know, I was into feeling this romantic feelings towards him and, Anyways, and you were hardening I uh, we, your heart. You were hardening your heart towards your husband too, right? It was hard towards my husband, and I. And then on top of that, the other danger thing for women to watch or, or men um, is, I had a couple of friends that saying, "Well, you know, Andrea, there's a reason why you were looking for love outside. You know, there's things wrong in your marriage." And 
and it's okay to divorce and remarry. And Mm -hmm. I started to have people advising me that, yeah, you're not supposed to be with your husband. He's not good. And you need a, you need a, you know, a Christian man, a godly man and things like this. And, Mm -hmm. and so, and then I found a counselor that was a pastor that was, all for divorce and remarriage. Oh, wow. And so I had I had a lot of counsel that was not right. And I didn't know. I, I wasn't even studying divorce and remarriage at this time. I just thought, well, how can I get divorced from my husband so I could be with this man that I really want to be with? And I, I knew in the Canadian law that, you know, we had to have, you know, have adultery could be one of the bases for divorce because in Canada you have to have it can't be a no-fault divorce. So, oh, I didn't know that. Really? Yeah, you, it's not no-fault divorce here. You have to have one, either abandonment of a year or adultery, or you have to prove abuse. Wow. Those are the only ways you can get divorced here That's in Canada. I mean, there are not that many things that are more conservative about Canada than the United States, but that definitely is. Yeah, no-fault divorce yeah. was a major, yeah. major blow. Yeah, so, so uh, you know, me and this fellow, I mean, I'll never say the names out loud. Yeah, no, no, but me we're and this not going to be using we, names or last names or anything. It's no, just, you're nothing a, like you're that. Andrea, that's it. Just, I'm Andrea. That's and, it. I'm Terry, and you're Andrea, and <laughs> I don't give my last name Yeah, out. and so so we arranged, like, my, uh, my husband put me in an apartment, um, and he was paying for it. He was always hoping I would come back. He, he, he was really committed to to the marriage and i was committed to finding a way out of it so i mean so this y'all is separated y'all separated but uh, we separated and then mm-hmm. i met i met this other fellow we did the act to get the adultery um so we had it on record oh wow and i use and i used that as my way to get divorced and then i had to also ask i could and i couldn't file for divorce because I was the offending party, so I had to ask my husband to divorce me. Oh my goodness! So I mean, I w- I was set on divorce, and uh, I, I say all this. Wow. I, it, it's 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 very. It sounds like I sound like such a horrible person, but but you have to hear the end of the story. <laughs> yeah, but no, really. So um, in other words, it's like I, you've made your mind up that you want a divorce, was, and you know what you have to do in order to get it. So yeah. you commit adultery, and then you go to tell your husband, okay, now I've committed yeah. adultery, so now please divorce me so I can have what I want. That's right. Oh, wow. He finally let me go. Uh, the divorce happened in, um, it was October tw- 2019, and, um, and then the papers came through in February, and then... Um, I, I, I was, of course, living on my own, and then, of course, I had to start paying for my own expenses after the divorce went through. And um, so, of course, I was making arrangements because my the person that I was crazy and hooked, you know, hooked over, um, he lived in the states, and I was in Canada. Now, all of a sudden, we got COVID, and there's so many restrictions; you can't cross the border. Right. So it was really, really hard to um, to try to figure out how to move uh, my stuff, and and so we planned we planned on um, it. It it was really rough, like um, to get it to work, um, to get married to him. Like he, was he his already? Divorce went, he, oh, that's yeah, what I was going to ask. He, he, he had, had left. His he divorce? had left his wife. He had left his wife before I had left mine, mm-hmm. and he had got his divorce. Um, like six months before mine. So, and did and he also he was, think he was a Christian? Yes, yes. So mm-hmm. he wanted to marry me and and get away from his wife, and and everything. And so his um, yeah. Anyways, I won't go. Yeah, into but his both, but right both of you thought that this was God's will that God wanted yeah, because, you to be happy because he was more believe it or not in my in my belief he was more godly and more of a christian than what my husband was right. so mm-hmm. and like like i was so i was so deceived right mm-hmm. okay i mean like yeah. like but you gotta remember i had advice from pastor right. and from these 
two friends of mine and and the counselor and it was yeah, I mean, and the, yeah. yeah, the counselor. I had all this advice saying, yeah, this was okay, because I had, you got to remember, you know, when, when you want something, you're going to paint it like your husband's abusing you, right? right? You're going right. to paint it like, oh, yeah, all the years of abuse, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't really like that. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. Now I look back. I mean, now I can see clearly, but I'm just saying it wasn't, but that's how deceived I was. Okay, this was a spirit of lust that had absolute control over me right. and I couldn't I could I want to I want to I want to put that in there because that comes into play later okay. and um so I go down I finally managed to go down to see this fellow and you know we got engaged and but then he never proceeded to really go through with getting the marriage to go through and I thought well what's going on and so we kind of had a little we thought this isn't the right time this isn't the right time and we we saw a pastor and he said you know Andrea you need to go back and make things right with your family before you can move on and so I thought well you know I better do that you know I better come back and try to reconcile with my kids because all through this time with the spirit of lust and wanting this man I didn't think of my kids much. I Mm. I didn't think about how I was hurting my family. I was so selfish and Mm. so self-centered. I just wanted this man. And your kids were upset, weren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, Mm. my my son wrote me off, and my my youngest um, was the first to come back to me and help me. And um, then my eldest daughter, she came later. But... um, so I came back, so because it didn't work out, it, everything was kind of like not working out because he wasn't proceeding with, you know, bringing my stuff over. And so I was wondering, well, what's going on? So I was only there three weeks. Then I came back in 2020. This was August 2020. And my husband, um, that's because he is my husband. Mm-hmm. I don't like calling him my ex. My husband. No, I don't use that term anymore. Um, No, my husband got me a place um, to for a year. um, He because I had to, I had to find a place that I couldn't live at home. Obviously, Mm -hmm. not when I was in this relationship. Mm -hmm. And of course, I missed this man terribly, and and he missed me. And through the year, we tried to arrange it so I could come, and you know for us to get married for sure next time. So in 2021, I know this is not that long ago, but in 2021, I finally got everything all ready to move again. And I sold all my furniture and I got a friend to take my car because, and hold it for me because um, I knew I couldn't bring my car over, but it was very difficult to move in 2021 to the states Mm -hmm. and so I got there and we we right away got married in in Florida and uh, then we went back to his place and I've got to explain what happened when I got married um the first thing was is I couldn't say the words I vow I said let's just say I promise okay Mm -hmm. so then we said we promise and we were just like it was him and me and a civil service on the beach. That was it. Mm -hmm. And the morning after, I had the demon of lust speak to me Mm -hmm. very clearly. Mm -hmm. And I was told, I heard the laugh, and I said, we got you now. You're going to be destroyed. You've lost everything. You've lost your family. And you're not going to be able to go back. And... Mm -hmm. I was Just absolutely... repeat that strongly. Repeat that strongly. People need to hear this. Can you just like... Really? The spirit of lust came to me very clearly, and it was another encounter, and I could hear the voice, because I heard first the laugh. Mm-hmm. I was alone in the bedroom uh, at, the, at the hotel, and he said to me, Haha, we got you. You're going to be destroyed. You're, you lost everything. And your life is over. Mm. Basically, that's what I was told. So I, 
And with that, when when I was told that by the spirit of lust, lust left me, and I was filled with the realization of what I had done. So I no longer lusted after this man, um, and I. And it, it, it wasn't that, like, he was nice, and of course we got along, and we had some good times, but it wasn't the same. It wasn't like, like, it wasn't like I was driven to be with this man. Mm -hmm. It was like, it was like I saw clearly that I had done wrong, and that I was out of God's will, and that I was fooled, and I felt so lost, and I felt so... I, I felt absolutely despair came over me. And from that point on, every morning I would be crying mm. and seeking God for forgiveness and repentance. Mm. And I was reading my Bible like crazy. And so a lot of things started to go wrong. Yes, I lost my kids. I started to realize, you know, I really miss my kids. And I realized I had no way of talking to them except for my youngest. And of course, I... My husband wasn't, I wasn't able to talk to him anymore, obviously. And so I was just, I was absolutely, I felt like my, I thought, I thought I lost everything and I lost my soul. And I was crying out to God and praying and repenting, but I was in adultery. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I knew it. I knew it. I mean, there's, there's no, you know what, I, Here's one thing I want to say. Like, I, I know so many people that are remarried. You know, you know you're not right with God. You you know. I mean, I was even on a worship team down in the States. I was doing, playing the keyboard and stuff. And, I mean, you would never think that there was anything wrong. Like, of course, I put on, of course, we were happy together. But when I was alone, I would be so sad. It was so despairing. And then things started to go wrong, like my health. Um, I started to started to have gynecolog gynecological problems where I had to see a specialist and they wanted to do surgery on me. They thought maybe I had cancer and I got COVID and I was sick. And all these so health problems happened and I started to see that things were not you know working out so good down there and I was missing Canada so much I was missing everything about Canada missing my and I started to think of my husband and I started to think how I was missing my husband and my home was and I started to wake up it was like kind of like the um the prodigal son when he woke up I know exactly how that feels like you're in the sin and you're in the pig pen and everything's gone and you've lost it all and then all of a sudden you wake up and you realize you know what I had it better at home and that was exactly the feeling that I had and at the end of January so I got married in September of 21 and the end of January I wrote I was crying every day to my daughter because she was the only one that would listen to me and um, I wrote an email to my husband and I begged him to take me back and he wrote back and he said and we talked and we started to talk on the phone and he said you know God has given me a love for you and I forgive you wow. and isn't that something, that eh? something. and and he said he was going to come and get me and so he would have to leave of course drive go across you know because it was 3,000 miles away where I was and um, I showed now where I got convicted and I showed this man that I had married the verses and the verses that convicted me and no one taught me no one showed me no pastor talked about it ever because you never hear about it in the church mm -hmm. was I read Romans 7 1 to 3 and it hit me like a ton of bricks and I knew I was in adultery, that I was called an adulteress in the eyes of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I didn't need any other verses. I mean, I knew that I shared that with him and he felt the same conviction. We saw this pastor, we made an appointment to see him. And I said, and he agreed that I had to go back and separate from 
this man, and I had this to go back the, and make things right. This was a pastor right. in the Florida. You were in Florida uh, with this. No, this was a this was a different state. I won't say oh, the okay. state, but, but this, this was but a different the, state. You were yeah. you were you were uh, going to church with the now second husband, and yes, you're the I second was. wife, and y'all are going to church, and someone there. Uh, no, this was a different pastor oh, from sorry. a different church. Okay, it was. Okay. It, it's it was just a connection that we we had visited this church and we had seen him a couple of times because we were because there were so many problems with the family and the children. But there was a and pastor not, who was telling you to go back to your husband. the truth. Yeah, I ha I had one pastor that told me the truth because no pastor because because the church where we were in they were okay with divorce and remarriage and they said we could. So we were in a small group with a couple that were divorced and remarried leading it. So, I mean, okay. we were, so, so there was no conviction at that church, but we sought out this past, this other pastor to get some help. Mm -hmm. And he said, yes, you, and he told me I, I had to go back and, and that we had to separate. Well, I, uh, so I let that husband know that I was going to go back and he agreed um, because he wanted to be right with God, and but he didn't want to reconcile with his with his wife. Yeah, that was something um, I was going to ask you when you were, you know, when the devil spoke to you basically and told you that you were going to be destroyed. Did you have uh -huh. any also remorse or conviction about his covenant wife? I did. I have had. I have been so, so I, I I don't know I've been praying every day now for them to be reconciled and I have repented um, I have said sorry to the Lord about um, you know how I've hurt that woman mm -hmm. and and I, mean, I would I, she I say still... would she say I, I you know I don't know exactly what in the timing of it all but would she say that you stole her husband from her, which she said, I mean, did he leave his, did he get a divorce so that he could marry you is what he was thinking? Or was he just already getting a divorce and you just happened to be. I, he, he, he wanted the divorce with or without me. He oh, didn't, okay. he wanted to leave okay. her. It, it had nothing to do with me. He okay. told me that many times. Okay. She never really knew. Uh, he had done an affair years ago and, he was unhappy with her for many years. Okay. So it was, it was between them. It, what I was told many, many times that it had nothing to do with me because while we were courting him and I, we broke up a few times and he went out with someone else. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it wasn't like, and he was divorced and it wasn't like he, he just didn't want to go back to her. So, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I really don't know my part, but I, but I am so sorry, um, for what I have caused. Cause I mean, I don't, I certainly didn't help them in their marriage. Absolutely. Right. I didn't help right. them, but I wasn't the reason why he left. Okay. So, yeah, just, but, um, sorry, I just wanted, I just wanted to clarify. Anyways, he, he knew, he knew that I had problems with, cause I was so miserable losing my children all of a sudden my children became very very important to me mm -hmm. and I started to miss my husband mm -hmm. and so my husband uh he despite his family um his brothers and sister they none of them wanted him to come back and get me and the children said yeah dad it's okay you can go get her but my son still wouldn't have anything to do with me my girls were okay with it um my eldest i took a little while but we're we're really close now but he came and he flew out and we had a moving van and it went very easily um you know in 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 uh i just want to say one thing in regards to my second that's just the divorce remarriage remar guy he was very good to let me go without any issue he was very good to help me pack up the van and all my stuff he wasn't giving me a hard time and he didn't mistreat me or anything like that he was very kind but we knew it was wrong we knew the lord was not with us mm -hmm. so 
I just want to say, like, I, I, I was really blessed to have no, you know, problem with, with that end. Mm -hmm. But my, my husband came and we packed up and I said, let's get out of here. (laughs) And I can't wait to get back. And of course it was a hard road to reconcile with so many people. My son now is, is fully reconciled to me. I'm so happy and blessed with that. And, And, um, our family's good except for my husband's brothers and sisters and their family they haven't accepted me they won't they don't want anything to do with me in fact my my husband and the kids well they're in their 20s they're having a new year's celebration with them this afternoon Mm -hmm. and I'm not invited so Mm -hmm. I'm alone but I spend so much time with the Lord and I I'm just so close to the Lord and I read and pray so much in my day I uh, I'm happy I I have no ill feelings towards anybody that hasn't accepted me yet Mm -hmm. I understand this is a really hard thing to accept but um anyway that's the story your husband pretty much is a is a, a Hosea He's a Hosea yeah. who took his adulterous wife back. He did. And, you know, we haven't had to have counseling. We, you know, it's just we've talked a lot, of course. And I got my divorce from my remarriage this uh, a few months ago. And so I am, um, so I don't even, God, I, I say to people, God doesn't recognize that at all. God yeah. God sees me with my husband. We are married, you know, like God sees us as this is my marriage. You know, I'm with my husband. Right. He doesn't see, like I'm forgiven. Like I, he who has sinned a lot, is, you know, loves a lot. I mean, who, who's truth. forgiven a lot, loves a lot. That's and I'll truth. tell you, I, I just, I'm just so, I'm so thankful every day. I'm just, I have so much thankfulness i thank the lord every day for rescuing me and for saving me from what that demon had um said to me the destruction that and and if i would have stayed in it yes i would have because you know we can we can damn ourselves to hell by our actions and our Mm -hmm. sin Mm -hmm. and there is no one saved always saved i was absolutely lost i know what that feels like and I, I saw how the Lord, I uh, saw how the Lord, I saw how the, the enemy wanted to destroy me and my family because I was doing a lot of ministry um, before I fell. Of course, I was removed from the church, you know, in the ministry of, of music mm-hmm. before uh, I, you know, when I was separated from my, my husband. But, um, Right now, I'm just doing videos, singing online, Mm because the Lord has made it clear to me He wants me to do songs, praise songs, and worship to Him Mm -hmm. on YouTube, because I don't have a church to... um, to do that ministry in anymore. So, Mm -hmm. so that's what I do now. I read scripture and I sing online, um, you know, little songs and stuff, Mm -hmm. little old hymns and things Mm -hmm. like that. And, um, anyways, that's, I am just so grateful and I'm so so grateful that my kids are back in my life. I am so happy and I am absolutely convinced about that anyone in remarriage, there's no way they have peace. I did not have peace. Um, it no, was clear. N- n- see, there's the difference. The people that are truly, you know, if you're born again and you got, con- I mean, think about it, how quickly you got convicted was the fact, yes. you know, that there was a battle between the devil and the Holy Spirit as to, you know, but you have the free will. You have the free will. That's the once saved, always saved thing is not true. You have the free will to go, wow, you know, I really I really am happy now that I've got a new, you know, a new man and all that. But um, that, when you say that everybody that's in it, they know if they're lost, they justify, you know, in, in Luke 16, it says, you know, they justify, they, they excuse themselves for what is an abomination to God. And you did the right thing because you started like, I'm going to study, I'm going to study, I'm going to study. And as you're reading the word, the, you know, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and 
that is why most most of the people that stay in their second marriages are have very happy marriages because they're not letting they're not letting the Holy Spirit convict them. They're not reading the Bible, and you know, I mean, yeah, think we, of how many yeah, people are in church <laughs> who are yeah. divorced or married, and they're doing ministry work as divorced or married people. You know, I don't know how I don't. I honestly, I, I was, it was so clear for me. It was so black and white, what was right and what was wrong. Mm -hmm. And it was so clear the destruction that was upon me. And it was so clear what I had to do. And God was so merciful to me to work on my husband to forgive and still love me. And mm -hmm. we get along great now. We have no fighting like we used to oh, that's before. Wonderful. Like we have a better relationship now than what we had before, you know, before any issue came up. And, you know... Y'all both appreciate each other now, which is nice. Yeah. I don't take anything for granted. Um, I don't take God for granted. I don't take my family for granted. I don't take... I, I don't... I, I read the Word um, every day, um, and I pray, and I... I just, I, I love the Lord. I'm, I mean, I, I mean, of course, I, I mean, look what he's done for me. Mm -hmm. So I, I've tried to share this with um, friends that are divorced and remarried, and they all say they're good, they're fine, they don't want to ever hear me talk about it again, and everybody gets mad and offended when I try to, if I even mention divorce, people get offended, and let alone remarriage, so, um, you know, what the Bible says about it. But um, people are not reading their Bible. I think that that, and they're not getting good teaching. Right. And it's it's really, uh, I haven't found anybody that, um, you know, really sees what I'm saying for them. You know, I, I haven't found anybody like me, I guess is what I'm trying to right. say. Which is why I got here. so excited that you found my channel because, and I think it is important because, you know, we we've got we have to when we know when we know the truth as unpopular as it is we've got to tell them and then when they reject it and they say don't talk to me about that anymore then you know wipe the dust from your feet but yeah that's um, what i've done but you know think about it i mean the rapture the rapture could happen today <laughs> you know you don't yeah. ever know and and i really do believe that a lot of the people that we've talked to about it and they say, no, no, I'm good with God. And don't talk about, yeah. don't talk about the rapture. Don't talk about divorce or marriage. You know, they're going to be left behind. And then God is going to speak to them or, you know, or they really have been given over to a reprobate mind and they don't, they're going to be destroyed. But those that, that, um, you know, God chooses, he might say, I sent you, Andrea, you didn't listen to her. She knew what she was talking about. She lived it out. And, you know, really, I guess you were all, you were, so it was about, it was about um, two, two years that you were backsliding. No, two or three years that you were backsliding. But, about three years, yeah. But that is yeah. the thing, that is the whole point of the how once saved, always saved is not right. Because you can backslide and, and fall away. I mean, it says, yes. you know, but in, it says if you are truly, you know, if you get convicted, you can't, you've got to turn and come back. You've got to be the prodigal. And, you know, but the, you know, it's like very few are wanting to, wanting to turn and repent. And the thing too is, um, you know, obviously you are still married in God's eyes, but did you and your husband think you needed to go through and have a legal uh, marriage again? Since We're back thinking together? of that. He, he wants to have his brothers and sister be on board. So it's more waiting for that. My sister and brother are fine. My family's fine. Yeah. But his family isn't. Um, I, I also want to add, I also want to add one more thing that if, here's the thing to think about. If the devil or the demon of lust said that message to me after I got married the morning after, why would it just be for me? It's for every remarriage. It's mm -hmm. not just it's not just a message for me. Right. You know, this is like I'm not 
I'm not uh, a lone experience here. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be something just for me. It's for anyone that decides to go into adultery. And, um, you know, I, I just want to say that. So. It's the truth. It's the truth. And they end up seeking out, when they, when they know it's wrong, they end up seeking out people to affirm them to stay in their sin. I had lots of affirmation to stay in it from all kinds of angles, but I cut off the I cut off the people that were supportive of the second marriage and the and that pastor. That's good. Um, that rec, you know, counseled that way. I um, I'm very I have to be very careful who I share the story with because people just don't respond well to it (laughs) it's just not they say well that's that's good for you you know I'm happy for you but I'm really happy in my remarriage and I don't want to hear about you know what you're saying so but we um, have to you know I mean we have a message and you know the people that try to shut us up you know particularly um Yeah, I mean, the people, you know, it hurt. The most it hurts is when it's somebody that's family or close to you. But you've got to think, you know, you just have to think that, um, you know, I I think frequently about Ezekiel 2 and 3 and Ezekiel 33, which I've been teaching on lately a lot. But, you know, it says if a righteous person goes and goes into sin, which is what you did, um, yeah. that they are not, you know, they're, I, I don't think it uses the word condemned. Uh, I'll put it up on the screen later on when I do this. But, um, you know, it says if the wicked person turns from their sin, they will be saved. But if the righteous person goes back into sinning, they're not saved. And, you know, it's it's like people think, well, you know, like for my husband to be remarried now 10 years, you know, and, and holidays are always difficult because I know, like, I know that my, my kids are all involved with dad, you know, and, and here I sit alone, you know, for 10 years, I've been living alone and they're all back with dad and the new wife huh. and the new child. And of course, what is, what did they do? They name, they have another baby. And what did they do? They name her Grace. Huh. And and her, her actual initials are CG. So it's cheap Grace is what it is. Yeah. But, um, you know, they all think that it's, uh, you know, it's, they, they, I mean, he's very, very involved in the church. And so they think, well, if you're in the church and you've repented, you know, like he would, he would read books about repentance and then say, see, I repented on this day, but you didn't repent if you're just saying I repent, but you're still committing adultery, right? So you, you got, you repented and then proved your repentance by your actions. That's how I have peace. Right. And thankfulness and joy in my life until, until I did my actions that went with my words until I did that, I, there was no peace. Mm-hmm. And I, I just want to add in about my sickness. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I came home and I got retested and everything was fine. I had no more issues, no more health problems. All my health oh, problems really? went away. So they were completely spiritual attacks on your they body. Were. I was, I was, I was in, I wasn't under God's hand of protection when I was in that marriage. I was being attacked by the enemy. He was said he was going to destroy me, and I was, and I knew, and I've talked to my husband. I says, if I had that operation, I I may not have made it through it because of what they were going to do. But um, but the thing was, I, you know, the Lord restored my health, and I'm under the Lord's protection now. And I'll tell you, it's it's just so clear for me. This is why I go, it's not just a message for me. It's not just my story. This, this is for everyone to heed, to not stay in their remarriage. You're not under the protection of God. You are going to have attacks. 
in all kinds of ways. You know, Andrea, I'm so glad that you brought that up because, you know, I've always had, I've always kept my comments open and, you know, I will always get these people that say, well, you always get the people who say the wrong thing, you know, oh, the exception, except for sexual immorality and they don't understand the difference between fornication and adultery. But I do see, you know, people there going, yes, I know that my remarriage is adultery, but both of us have all these health problems. So there's no way yeah. that we could separate. I mean, I just had that on a video a couple of days ago. Uh, you know, it's like my second wife has all these critical um, uh-huh. health problems. I've got health problems. And you're saying I'm supposed to leave her? And I, I mean, uh-huh. that is what you've got to do. It, it may be difficult, yeah. but you've got to do it because you're, even if they, you know, and I'll have people say, well, we're still living together, but we're not having sex, you know, because we know that no. having sex is wrong. But what would, I mean, no. wouldn't you say that your health problems are partially due to your, yes. your unrepentance and then also yes. your, if you stay, even though you're not having sex, that still it is looking to the world that you're a husband and wife when you're an adulterer and an adulteress, right? Yeah, well, right away we worked on, when when uh, when we realized we had to separate, we worked on our divorce right away. We got it going. Mm-hmm. And so we were both obedient in that. But uh, yeah, the health problems, I knew, I knew, uh, I knew this was because of, you know, what I was doing. I mean, I, I guess, I guess, you know, it's a matter of how honest you want to be with yourself, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you can say all kinds of excuses or try to justify or find somebody to help you support your, what you really want. It's, it's a matter of selfishness too, because are you going to live for yourself and are you, are you don't want to admit that you did wrong? Mm-hmm. Um, or are you going to just give it over to the Lord and, and, you know, cry at his feet and say, Lord, help me and forgive me and, mm-hmm. you know, get me out of this. Mm-hmm. That was what I cried all the time. And mm-hmm. he knows it's your heart. It's your heart. Is your heart truly going to go for repentance and, and admit that you did wrong? Admitting you do, people just don't want to admit that they're wrong. You know, right. they, <laughs> they just don't want to do it. And you will pay the price with your health because the health is tied into all of this, um, adultery. Mm-hmm. Did you have any, um, like bad dreams? I mean, I don't know if you're a dreamer. Did you have any like dreams or attacks or anything like that? Oh yeah. Yeah. I had, had them regularly had terrible dreams, but I don't remember. Okay. Um, so but them as far as, since you've taken all these steps, then you're living, you're living the righteous life now. And you have been blessed for your obedience to repent yes. and leave it, right? It's well yes, worth it, I've, right? <laughs> I I'm always um I'm always like I've just there's so much I'm just happy and I, I it it's just like a light in my life now. Uh, before I felt so like I was so depressed. It was interesting too, my husband said to me before I left and did all these things you know that were wrong he said to me he had a dream that I would um that I would kill myself I would be I'd be abandoned by this man um in the states and that Mm -hmm. I would have feel hopeless and he said he saw me kill myself Mm -hmm. and so so you know there's all these things you put together and you go I could I could see myself having been abandoned by this man because for one thing the expense of operations and the health and he didn't have the money. Mm. So, you know, that like it could have gone that way. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'll never know, but I am I'm healthy. I I'm I'm thankful and and you just you just feel so humble and and appreciative and holding on to pride and thinking that you're not going to fall i just i just really warn people don't don't think that'll never happen to you that you won't get 
this falling Mm -hmm. because the devil will, the pride, I was just reading some scripture about, you know, you know, when you're prideful thinking you're not going to have anything bad happen to you. Um, cause I, you know, I was proud of my own self-righteousness, um, that you will get attacked. (laughs) It just, Mm -hmm. I mean, it may be a different type of attack, for me, it was this because I always said we would never get divorced, and I always said that. But um, but then I pursued it with everything I had just to have this man. And then I realized, you know, this is just the man. I mean, our life is temporary. Eternity is forever. And the Lord is so much more than a man. <laughs> so. I mean, the and Lord really, is a, each the day, Lord is everything. Each day, when you talk about pride, it really is. It. Each day, we have to die to ourselves, and we can't just, you know, we just can't yes. presume on the grace of God. He is gracious. No. He is merciful, and you know, we can have assurance that we're His. But yeah. it's still, it's still, you know, just as being in a marriage. Here we are in a, you know, in a, in a way. I'm, you know, we're in a marriage first to Jesus and then we're in our marriages, good or bad, right? But in our marriage to Jesus, we don't want to take Jesus for granted ever, ever take him for granted. No, And, um, you know, if you start, you know, I think it's like, I'm amazed to me. These, these once saved, always say people too. It's like they go, you know, it's like they, they, I've heard like good pastors, like, you know, they're talking about end times, like uh, Billy Crone, for instance. I heard him say to his congregation, he, I mean, he's completely all about the rapture. and But he, yes, said, yeah. he said to his congregation that you can be a lazy Christian and not ever do a single work for God and you're going in the rapture. I know. I, I don't like his teaching on that one saved, always saved. I, I can't listen to that. I mm-hmm. just, I can't listen to that. I like his rapture talk, but, yeah. um, and, and, you know, yeah. and then like, uh, Jam, not Jam McCra- uh, uh, what's his name? Jack Hibbs. Jack Hibbs, obviously very good on the pre-trip rapture, but he's, he said, I mean, I did a video about it. He said to a woman who was just getting saved, she was just coming to Christ and, She's, he was reading her question and she, she said, I am divorced or married five times. And I started reading my Bible cause I'm just looking into the Bible and pastor Jack, I know you've studied the Bible for a long time and I know you can tell me, but it looks like I'm in adultery in my fifth marriage. What do you say? Pastor Jack Hibbs. And he said, boy, I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going to get in trouble for this, but I'm just going to tell you, this is what I counsel people. He said, it doesn't matter if you've been married five times or 50 times, just stay in that marriage. No, (laughs) no, 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 no. no. And, and, you know, I, I haven't done a video about it yet, but Dr. David Jeremiah, he is very good on, the pre-trib rapture, but he also has this, has a, I found an audio message. I haven't found a video message, but he starts out, you know, he's, I don't know if you know who Dr. David Jeremiah is, but I do. I do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he's like the, you know, he's just this lovable kind of guy, right? Just so lovable. Yeah. And, um, really, really, really good on the rapture being pre-trib. But anyway, I found an audio and he was, um, saying, you know, I really, really searched this out in the scriptures because I don't want to be wrong on this. I don't want to have, I think he even said, I don't want to have any blood on my hands. And then he proceeded to give the excuses, you know, abuse, abandonment, and adultery. Oh, no. It's like, where's, well, you know, where's the disconnect? And, you know, it, it's like, how, uh, <laughs> really like how... I mean, I don't think that God will let, I don't know, what do you think? Do you think that, I mean, I just don't see how God would let men in leadership, pastoral leadership, who condone this, accept it, or perform remarriage ceremonies, or 
do what about thinking about like these pastors that do funerals for people that are divorced or remarried and say that they went to heaven well you know it's interesting that that pastors would say abandonment adultery and abuse because those are the three <clears throat> causes in in uh, civil Canadian law that allow you to get divorced. Why are we being secular in, in our beliefs? Like, why are we listening to just what, you know, the secular world believes is, is a good cause for, like, we're supposed to be followers of the word. <clears throat> but it just seems like people want to, have their cake and eat it too. They don't. They don't want to lose people in their church. They don't want to. They don't want to lose half their congregation mm -hmm. because they. Because um, <clears throat> so many people are divorced, and uh, and so I think that's the reason why. I think we've just done a compromise because of the times, because of divorce being so prevalent. Like if you look back fifty years ago. Divorce was not very common. Right. It was very rare. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just us. It's just it's just a falling away. It's just the apostasy mm -hmm. of the church. And it's amazing that these teachers, these well-known teachers, will compromise on this issue. It's because there's so many people that are divorced and remarried. Right. So that's why. And I will be. Uh, so it's very hard to find a church, you know, that doesn't think that way. Yeah, I would, I mean, I don't know what the state of the churches are where you are, but there is no church that anywhere around me. Um, there's one that's like an over, an over an hour away. I've talked with um, one of the guys, you know, who, he actually trained the preacher about divorce and marriage. Um, but you know, it's over an hour away. So I, I don't travel that far to go to the, ch go to the church, but, um, I, you know, I don't know what it, I, the thing is, you know, this state of the church, like my last, I think my last interview that I did with someone, she was, she's in Zimbabwe and her husband, um, her husband divorced her, remarried and then became a Christian and they made him an elder of the church. And then the church that she was in, she went to confront privately the woman worship leader. She was the minister of music. And that woman is divorced or married. So she went first privately to tell her, hey, this is what the Bible says. You are in adultery. And she went and took it to the pastor and said, you need to discipline her instead of disciplining me i mean this is yeah. basically what happened with me too my husband went to my church and had me disciplined instead of his church disciplining him my church disciplined me and um told me i needed to be quiet and not speak about my husband not speak to my husband not email my husband and that, but the thing is they're calling him my husband <laughs> You know, they're calling him my husband, <laughs> yeah. but, but he's with another woman in a marriage, you know? And, but, you know, it's like the people that we are the ones that are shunned from the church because they don't, they do not want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. And so to go and try to find a church, you know, I've, I've emailed churches. I've, in fact, my friend in Toronto, Canada, who's the blind the blind young woman, she's ex-LGBT, she emailed, I think it was all the Calvary Chapel churches in Canada uh, about divorce or marriage and also the Assembly of God churches in Canada. That's a lot. Yeah. And not a single one, not a single one, which is so amazing too because Calvary Chapel, you know, their statement of faith is... Their statement of faith says they believe in the holy institute of marriage, a lifelong commitment, you know, between one man and one woman. And, you know, they don't accept same sex marriage and all of this. And it's, you know, it's a big denomination. And, but they don't put it into practice. 
And unfortunately, like even, I mean, I've used in my videos, I've used 412 Church. Um, I don't know if you know 412 Church with uh, Tom Hughes. Oh, yeah, I know Tom Hughes, yeah. Okay, yeah. so 412 Church ends up that they actually, even though that statement of faith is good, in practice, they they have divorce and remarriage, and the executive pastor performs remarriage ceremonies. And he is he is involved with with Tom Hughes now in the Hope for Our Times ministry, and it breaks my heart. I, I think I think what it is is the once saved always saved uh, belief trumps everything mm -hmm. because. What they say, because what I've, you know, I've, I've just talked to so many people that are divorced and wanting to get remarried or are remarried. They're saying that it doesn't matter how many, you know, whatever sin I've done, God doesn't remember it. They say, God doesn't remember any of those marriages that I did before because I repented and came to salvation. So, um he doesn't see, he sees no sin. So they think that God forgets the marriages. And uh, that's, I think what, what they're trying to, you know, preach is that because once saved, always saved says all your sins are gone. God forgets it is removed from the, you know, which is He's true, but, mm -hmm. but it's not, there's so many scriptures that are very clear about the adulterous woman and about remarriage that Jesus says and that Paul says. And there's just so much teaching on that. And they dismiss that. They say, well, grace trumps it all. So mm -hmm. it's just this hyper grace that has taken over everything. Um, that's mm -hmm. what I think is the problem. It is. I totally agree. It's hyper grace. It's once saved, always saved. It's cheap grace. You know, it just doesn't. They like, try uh -huh. to. They try to separate out. You know, it, the thing is, the Bible says it's the sin of your past. It doesn't say that uh -huh. you can continue in the sin. So if you yeah. are, when you get saved, whatever sin that you're in. You know, you have to, um, it's like, it's also like the no repentance gospel too, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's so many names for it, but you know, I know what I know. they don't even seem to understand what, you know, what is repentance? They don't, they don't understand. understand. They don't understand but it. He, they say, oh, we are, I mean, they, t yeah. they actually will say, you know, the divorced from your couple or the pastor that says they can be divorced from married. Well, they repented. And so they're forgiven, um, and so they can stay yeah. in it. And it's like, don't you understand what repentance is? No, I mean, they don't. It's a lie. But here, but here's the thing: with my my experience, the, um, I can't, I can't say I I can't say that what they're saying because it was so clear to me what was said to me how I felt and so, like I had the sad thing Terry is that there were no there was no counseling to approve what I was learning in the Bible myself mm -hmm. to to convict me except for this one pastor that he was the only one so what I'm saying is that it, the conviction that I got was truly from the Holy Spirit it wasn't because somebody came to me and said hey you know this is wrong, you know, no, mm -hmm. no church, no, mm -hmm. nobody, mm -hmm. no, no family, not, not, nobody, nobody said, Andrew, you're doing wrong. They thought I did wrong, but they just didn't want to say anything or, you know what I mean? Like, right. like they might've thought, I mean, I don't know, because I got that totally from the Lord mm -hmm. and that was how I got to be rescued out of that state. And I, and I know it's a very, it's not a very common thing, but I think my heart was just really set on being right with God. And I was so, I felt so awful and I had to, um, and I sought it with all my, I sought it with everything I had and God saw that and he saw a truly repentant heart that wanted to be set free and right with him again. So 
the problem is, is people want to be in their remarriage. That's if, if you want to be in that remarriage um, in any way, you're not going to have the Lord help you out of it right. because you have to really with seek with tears and repentance. And I mean, I cried every morning. I, w- I was so, so depressed. It wasn't, it wasn't a fun, happy time. And plus I was sick. So it was, um, but you know, it's amazing because I, I knew it was the Lord speaking to me. So people say, well, maybe it was just you. No, <laughs> because I, I've had experiences with the Holy Spirit before and I know exactly how he sounds. I know exactly how he works. Um, cause years ago I had an incredible experience with the Holy Spirit when I went to Bible school in Sweden and I grew up in a, you know, in a way that didn't believe in the gifts, oh, you know, or anything. Oh, a cessationist. And yeah, I grew up that way and, mm-hmm. and I'm not a cessationist, mm-hmm. but, um, when I went to Sweden and I was a part of a, of a four girl team, music team, and we were invited to sing and play at a church um, as part of the ministry of the Bible school. The lady that hosted us took us to a meeting. Um, now in Sweden, it was all charismatic or a state church or charismatic. There was no, uh, and nothing else. And we had to walk and it was cold and I was tired and I was grumpy and I didn't, <laughs> didn't want to go. And I had a bad attitude. I was like, oh, you know, because it's all being Swedish too, right? So you're just sitting oh, there, yeah. all Swedish, and you're just, and I, I didn't want to be around the charismatic um, service at all. Then all of a sudden, Terry, I, the Lord really worked on me. He singled me out. I had the pressure of God push me, push my head to the table, and I couldn't lift my head. Wow. And I couldn't. I, I could not lift my, I said, I can't lift my head, girls. And I had to put it, I, I couldn't, I had such a heaviness on me, I couldn't move. Then after a while with that, I don't even know how long that was, probably about 20 minutes, maybe half an hour, all of a sudden I started to hear angels singing mm. in English. I heard English singing. Oh, yeah. And I was able to lift my head then, and I said, do you hear that? Nobody else was hearing what I was hearing. I was hearing all this incredible heavenly music. I mean, it was, I've never heard music like that in my life. It was, it was absolutely glorious. I was absolutely going, do you hear that? People probably thought I was a little crazy, but I was like going, do you hear they're singing in English? They're singing in English. <laughs> and, and, and I'm looking around and everybody looks the same. Nobody's noticing anything what I'm hearing, you know? Um, and I'm hearing all these different voices singing in English and everybody's normal, you know, singing in Swedish, I guess. And then all of a sudden they stop the service and they say, well, the four Canadian girls come to the front. Well, I said, I know this is for me. (laughs) (laughs) This has to do for me. And then they prayed over us. And all that God said to me was that he loved me. They loved me over and over. Mm. And then I felt the oil, the hot oil pour down over me. And I was, I was regenerized and I was on fire for God for a very long time. But, wow. um, so yeah, that so, you, then that's I said, when you I said, received like cannot, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you think is that it was, it was the anointing. really strong. Yeah. It, it was a incredible anointing. And I, I said to my friends, I says, we can't say this isn't real anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I, I've never been able to say <laughs> that the gifts aren't real because I, I heard, I heard heaven music. I mean, the, it sounded like it because these were octaves that people can't sing. You know, they right. were too high, right. and it was, it wasn't human voices that were doing it, and uh, and they don't sing in English anyway. So they went to start singing English when they're looking. <laughs> They just went. So they were singing in Swedish. And that, that was is so English. cool. That is so cool. And yeah. you know, really, that is another thing that, um, you know, as you're looking, I don't know how long you've been looking into um, this community of people that do stand for marriage permanence, but a lot of them are cessationist. A lot of them are cessationist. They don't, um, you know, I was thinking about there's a, um, a guy, I think he's in Idaho. Truth Baptist is the is the church, and 
Um, he has some really good sermons on divorce or marriage, really good. But he is a cessationist and he does not. And so like I put in a comment to him and he just fired back at me. No, you know, no, there is no way that men, you know, no way that anybody prophesy. I'm like, but you don't understand. No. It's like I got the gift of singing in tongues. I sing in tongues. I get a melody. Then God gives me, he speaks to me and tells me what, what words to put down for made, making the song. And I can't make up these melodies. I can't make up these words. And I don't know about, I don't know if you sing in tongues. Do you sing in tongues? I haven't really, uh, I, I pray in tongues. I haven't really, um, Oh my goodness. Done. Come on, girl. You gotta, you gotta let it. <laughs> I haven't tried if, you, it. <laughs> if you pray, if you pray in tongues, just say, okay, I want to start singing in tongues. And yeah. it's, the, the melodies are way better than any music for me. It's like, I record them every once in a while, just so that when I, I had all this stuff on my old phone and then my old phone died. Cause I had, it's like, okay, when I, you know, when my kids, my kids are cessationists. When I leave and they come and find my phone, then they're going to hear all these songs that mom was singing that they can't receive right now. And, um, but it's an amazing thing because, you know, your music, I'm, I'm music, you know, we're musically involved. I've been ra raised in music, church music all my life. And, you know, yes. music, music is a wonderful thing. Of course, the devil also uses music, but when you start singing in tongues, you're just like, how does it, it's like, it's like, I just lie in the bed and then all of a sudden I start singing this song and musically it all fits together. And I'm like, wow, how is that? But, um, the other day, I've been estranged from my, um, family for a long time, but the other day I went on New Year's Eve, I went to, um, visit my parents and my mom, uh, I had told her, Mom, there's a song that I wrote called um, Heaven is a Wonderful Place. I guess that's why I was thinking about it since you're um, the, what the Lord had told you about. Heaven is, a com Heaven is coming. Is that what, you sa what he told you? I, he said the exact words were, are you ready to go home to heaven soon? Are you ready to go home to heaven soon? Oh, wow. I am so ready. <laughs> And, uh, and I had written, <laughs> and I was all into, all into watching the rapture. That's why I was going out, giving, giving out, um, so many tracks at the time. So, yeah. yeah. And I think, it, you know, I mean, we all are kind of like, oh my goodness, I've been telling people about the rapture for so long and we're still here, but it, you know, it's those of us who are, who have the endurance and the patience to endure you know, that are really walking by the Holy Spirit. But this song that the Lord had given me called Heaven is a Wonderful Place, it I don't even think it's, I don't even think it's had, I think it's only had 77 views. And it just is like, I'm like, Lord, this is such a wonderful song. I love this song. <laughs> and, um, yeah. and then, so I'm over at my parents' house. My mother was always an organist and a choir director. I mean, a soloist. She has been in music all church music all my life and I said mom you know I'm over here maybe we could try and see if you could play the piano to the song heaven is a wonderful place I mean she's 83 years old you would think she starts she she starts playing she goes I don't like that key oh that note is wrong I mean oh it was just like it was horrendous she goes no I don't like those words I'm like mom mom you don't understand mom the holy spirit gave me this song these are the notes he gave me. These are the words. And mom, I've already recorded it. It's up on my channel. And if nobody listens to it, they, they don't care. I know that God, it's God's song. And I assume when we get up to heaven, I'm going to be teaching everybody the song, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but but then the strange thing was, I was like, okay, I'm going to leave now. Because, you know, things have been peaceful. Um, I mean, my parents did not speak to me for nine years after I got born again. But anyway, I go to leave and my mom comes to the door. No, no, you don't need to go. I was like, mom, you know, when you are so judgmental and critical, you're not criticizing me. You're criticizing God. And you're not listening to me to tell you that I didn't write this song. This song was written by God. And you're criticizing God and dishonoring my Lord. And she goes, well... Maybe we should try another song. I said, okay, let's try another song. And I just sung a song in tongues a couple of days before 
uh, as I was getting in bed. I just get in bed and, you know, that way I can just sort of turn over my uh, brain to the Lord while I'm sleeping. Because, you know, the devil, I could attack, I could attack dreams of dreaming with, of being with my husband. Oh, I know. That's the thing. It's like, if I do a really strong video, uh, you know, and really strong video about divorce or marriage, the devil hates it. And then I'll have a dream about being with my husband and I have to wake up and go, okay, you know, yeah, it grieves me. It grieves me that my husband is not seeing, but you know, I, I have not sinned and the devil does not want me talking about it. And so, um, anyway, I sang, so I started playing this song that I had recorded in tongues. And the amazing thing was my mom is going, she doesn't realize it. I said, mom, this is another song that I started, I started singing the other night. She's listening. She goes, wow, this is a really, really good song. I love the melody. I said, mom, that's me singing in tongues. She goes, mom, she goes, oh, oh, you're not supposed to do that in public. (laughs) I'm like, mom. Oh. oh my goodness no. I mean oh. they are so indoctrinated you know, know. they're so indoctrinated I, I once saved always saved um know. you know oh when I came when I came back from the Bible school I was kicked out of my church because I said I had that experience I shared oh, did and you really I was so mad at me told me to get out and to not come and really? it was uh it, it was a Baptist church so yeah okay uh, yeah, it's the but yeah, you know, the no, I I have I I I have to you know I'm careful who I share all these things with because not everybody can receive. What I say. Yeah, well, but, uh, but you know what? He, here's the thing: the devil doesn't want me talking about it either because I know I've I can expose the demon of lust because the demon of lust was what got me, mm-hmm. and that's what's getting people to go and go after another guy or another woman Mm -hmm. and it's exposed you know it it's not real here's the thing it's not real it's not real love it's not real it's fantasy it's it's um you know it's it's not real and it's i i know i know that sharing it is not I know that, but I pray, I pray over myself all the time now to have the armor of God, because if I don't, um, I get so many attacks. I've had two car accidents this year. Oh, wow. Um, I've had, I have to cover myself before I go to sleep with, I, I pray right. a lot before I go to bed and, uh, of course, always repenting because I always, I always say, Lord, I want to be ready, worthy to escape, you know, and be raptured right. and, which is another yeah, reason always, why it's not once saved, yeah, always saved. Or why would no, the Bible tell us to you've got to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. There's so many scriptures right. that you, you can't, you got to take the whole word. That's why I read through the Bible every year. Like I, I, You have to take all the scripture and in context about what it's saying. And you can't just cherry pick what ones you like. And, and uh, unfortunately... Mm-hmm. You, it, it's really hard to find people that understand what I'm saying without. They'll just say, "Oh, that's good for you," and I just don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, they just don't want. There's, you know, spiritually dead and not in the family of God, and you know they think, "Oh, you're being judgmental," when, or yeah. you're a legalist. You know, I mean, that's the thing. I'm calling. I'm called religious. And then yeah. I'm called religious. I don't, even know, I don't even understand how I'm called religious. I don't. I'm going. Well, what's religious about me? I'm just reading and praying and singing to the Lord. Um, I don't know what's religious about me. Yeah, there's not anything <laughs> religious. And also, you know, when you think about it, the Roman. Because for me, it was Matthew five thirty two. Because my husband was put, you know, divorcing me. But for you, Romans seven. You know, there's no. There's no gray. It's black and white with Romans 7. And then people will say, well, you're being a legalist. But that is what Romans yeah. 7 is saying, that this is the law of marriage yeah. Yeah. and that and you then, will be called an adulteress unless your husband has died. And that's the thing, oh, too. I, you never actually, like, I mean, you know, that's another thing. It's like some people, okay, I know that's what the Bible says, so I'm just going to pray for my spouse to die so that then I can have another spouse. 
No, I pray for God to bless my spouse and to get a long life. I, I yeah. do that now. I used to, I actually was so bad, Terry. Um, the, the spirit of the, the demon of lust was so strong on me that I actually was was trying to figure out ways to kill my husband. Oh, were you? Um, That's why I was wondering. Yeah, I was absolutely. I was actually trying to put things in his drink and things like that. And he caught me. Like, like really? I mean, wow. I was horrible. I was horrible. But but you gotta remember that was that was that was that demon of lust that. Yeah, I think that's good to admit me. that. And the thing is, it's not, you know, when people hear demon of lust, they just think about sexual, but it's also a lust of, of pleasing my own desires. That's right. And, I, I had you know, they think this. they, when you say, you know, I had a spirit of lust, they think that you're constantly, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> horny is the word I would have said, but, but it can also no, be no, just, that's, I mean, that's what people think. You know, oh, lust is about sexual desire, but it's not. It's the lust of the flesh and the pride of life, and the lust of the flesh is more than sexual gratification. It's you know a lust of, and also in a lust of someone else's spouse. It's covetous. It's idolatry. Yeah. It's, it's you know it's the Jezebel spirit. Is what it is. It is, and I was so, I was so consumed with it that. I mean, it's crazy all the things I went through uh, trying to accomplish my way. It's all, it was all self. It was all, and it wasn't, it didn't even make sense. Because now, the reason I say that, I'm not trying to say, well, you know, I'm not responsible. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm saying that I was driven by the spirit of lust. Because now when I look back, here's the thing, when I look back and going, I can't believe I did those things. I can't believe I did what I did. Like right. it doesn't even, now it doesn't make any sense why I did what I did. What made me like, I'm happy here. Like what, what, you know, mm -hmm. like it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to my thinking that I would sabotage my home like that. Like in Proverbs, it says um, the adulterous woman, you know, tears apart her house with her hands you know mm -hmm. you know just it's in i think it's in seven proverbs seven and mm -hmm. it says the eldest woman will destroy her family with her own hands well that's what i did um i i yes i i gave myself over to that demon of lust that was so clear and and i'm just doing this testimony to expose it mm -hmm. and to say, you know, people, it's not, not about, you know, just, you know, feeling lustful for somebody. It was the whole thing. It was destruction. The spirit of lust is destruction for your life and for those in your family. That's mm -hmm. it. I, I, um, I had had that and it's no longer with me. I don't have that same temptation and I don't say that in pride. Mm -hmm. It's because um, I don't get tempted like this anymore. I, there's no, because it's been exposed and That's right. I've seen it. I've heard the ver the voice. I've seen it. I've lived it. So I'm, I'm actually someone that the devil does not want to hear me speak because mm -hmm. there's so many people caught up in this. I'm not alone. And I know that in comments, people like to call me, well, all kinds of names with what I had done. But you got to remember, this was driven by the spirit of lust, and I am no longer that person, and I wasn't in my right mind when I was doing those things, obviously. And God has redeemed me. It's his amazing mercy mm -hmm. for me. And that that's I just give him the glory for saving me. Saving my family, my family. I mean, for us to be reunited after all this, it's just wonderful. It's wonderful. And, and I'm, all I can do is wake up. I'm thankful and loving towards my, I'm, I'm giving towards my husband. I never used to be a, such a great wife. Now I'm a great wife. Like, like um, trying to be thoughtful and think about him more, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm a different person. That's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I'm a different person than I have been for a very long time. It's like you've had a deliverance, even though you didn't go to a deliverance ministry. 
Well, the, the, the Lord delivered me, yeah, right? the Lord delivered you. I he mean, did the Lord, it. it was you know, I know what that's like. I mean, the Lord delivered me and healed me. And, and um, you know, I tell, I tell people about this because, you know, it says in Ephesians 5, uh, 11, it says to have nothing, no, take no part in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, rather expose uh-huh. them. Well, yeah. who better to expose the lies of the devil than those of us who've been through the lies? Because, you know, I don't know, you probably haven't yeah. seen my testimony, but I mean, I was, I was suicidal for, I didn't actually try to commit suicide, but it was constantly on my mind for nine months after God showed me about my husband's adultery until I got born again. And, you know, the devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And so, um, you know, once we have beaten him by the power of the Holy Spirit, we've got to tell, we've got to tell others so that they can be on the lookout to go, oh, I'm starting to slip away or I'm starting, I haven't been, I haven't really been in the word lately or, you know, I'm not praying and all that. And the next thing you know, they have gone astray. And yes. It's going to be so sad when the rapture does happen. And we, you know, I'm, ho- I'm, I'm hoping it could happen today. I wake up every morning Amen. thinking, <laughs> Lord, I don't, I, you know, I don't want to be here. I want to be in heaven. And, you know, you want to be in heaven. And um, uh-huh. I can't do anything about the people that don't want to be there. It's like, you know, we have been chosen out of you know it's an you know it's really gets complicated when you think about predestination but you know the bible in ephesians 1 says that we were chosen and there are places where it says god chose us and so he knew you know he knows the beginning from the end and you're doing your best to honor your husband while you're here but you know I'm not saying you, I'm not trying to say, oh, he's lost or saved or whatever, but think about it. I'm just going to say, you don't have to say, I'm just saying, I'm assuming that you are walking with the Lord very tightly. You get to go in the rapture, say he gets left behind. And, Uh um, then that's when he is going to get truly born again. And he'll go, wow, wow. And then think of all the things that God could have him do during the tribulation. You know that, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not trying to say anything about your husband. I'm just saying in general, I know like I'm the only one going in the rapture for my family. And I have all these left behind letters written. I have seen no Uh progress in the almost seven years that I've been talking about it with anybody. And so I'm thinking, well, I'm just chosen to be going in the rapture. And then there's going to be a great multitude that are coming after me that um they were warned you know they were warned and it was by god's love that warned them i just happened to be the mouth that warned them you know and that's what you're doing andrea it's like you're being the mouth for the for the uh, you know for the king he says you know if you're going to speak speak with the authority that he has given you and you've shared your testimony and you're speaking you're bringing light to a very common lie of the devil. And, uh-huh. um, you know, we have to be walking on the narrow road in victory. Uh-huh. And um, it's it's sad. It's sad to see how lost everybody is. But, you know, it was that's the way it was intended to be, that there were only eight on the ark, <laughs> you know. And, yeah. and that it is amazing, was, too, is like here you I and I are talking for the first time. First time ever mm-hmm. talking, and First time. by the Holy Spirit, we have unity. We it's do. all it's all God. It's all God. The Holy Spirit brings us unity because we read the same word. We have the same Holy Spirit. <laughs> we have the same baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so we're in agreement. And we see things from God's point of view, which is all that matters. Yeah, yeah it's, it's all about him. I was told when I was quite young that I was called out of my family. Hmm. So um, hmm. by a Pentecostal counselor one time, mm-hmm. cause I was suicidal at, when I was a teenager mm-hmm. and, um, and I was in a, I was in an abusive relationship 
and he said to me, you know, because because he would he was quite a quite a great counselor at the time, and he said, you have been called out of your family, and I've had the hardest road of my family, like my brother and sister. Mm -hmm. um, they have had normal families with normal kids with normal grandkids. They've never had any scandal like me or they've never had any they've just had it normal mm -hmm. <laughs> just, yeah. i mean they're just normal they're 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 all they're all cessationists but they're all just kind of like normal you know because that's how i was gr brought yeah. up mm -hmm. but i've had so many um so many experiences and, and i've been just i have been called out <laughs> i have done horrible things and but then the lord has redeemed me amazingly so I know he has me. Uh, I want to, uh, you know, I know he has me, but I could have easily have said no to him. You mm -hmm. know, I could have easily have said, no, I want my way. Right. Um, so it isn't, yes, he had me, had a hold of me, and he saved me, redeemed me. But I had to seek that with all my heart. Right. And that is the key. And, um, and I... I love the Lord. I don't care about parties or anything. I, I'm going to pray in the new year. Um, that's that's my goal here, and I, I'm going to get. Um, I just I just love spending time with the Lord, and um, so it's funny. Uh, people think, well, why don't you know? You don't have a lot of friends that you hang out with. No, I don't. <laughs> right. There's nobody to. I don't know who to hang out with. But I I don't really need it. Um, I have the Lord, so um, I am not lonely. Godliness and with contentment is great gain. I am so content. Mm. I'm. I I just uh, I'm just so thankful. I, and that's the result of coming back from such a dark place. You know, when the Lord pulls you out of that miry pit, sets your foot upon the rock, and you are with Him, and there's. And you know clearly, you know, you don't, you can't fall anymore, though. You know, you really can't. Mm -hmm. And you can't, you can't turn your back on, uh, on him anymore after something like this. Um, right. It's just, it's just, not, you know, so I have to work at keeping my desire for him over everything because, and I do that with how I live my life, you know. I live it separately unto the Lord. I don't listen to any secular anything. I don't listen to secular TV or, or music or anything like that. It yeah. has no desire for me. I, I mean, my family does, but so I, I'm forced to hear some of it some of the time. Like, yeah. right. But when I'm alone, it's, it's always, and they know that I, I don't know. I just, I like to live a separate life for the Lord. And it's, I don't have, yeah. It's, it's good. It's, it's good. The Lord is good. He's enough. He's enough. You know, the so, thing too, you. Andrea, um, you know, a lot of, the first thing that I had to repent of when I got saved in uh, 2005 was idolatry. And God said, you've loved your husband and your children over me. And I thought I had been a Christian since I was age 12 in the Baptist church. And I was just crying and crying about that. But, you know, you could have also gotten free from the lust of, you know, this man and gone into idolatry of your children. And that all you could think about was reconciling with your children and getting your children, you know, which isn't, that's, you know, it's a, yes, you want to reconcile with your children and you you know, you do pray for their coming back and all of that. But God will never, ever want you to have them above him. Right? Oh, no. And so that would have no. been that would have been another way that the devil is like, well, that didn't work with her being in that remarriage situation. So let me try to get her this way. And, no. you, you know, you fought that fight, too. And, you know, sounds like to me that you're completely heavenly minded yeah you know, that's i don't know I, yes. it's like people go oh you're he you're so heavenly minded you're no earthly good and i'm like are you kidding i <laughs> the bible tells you to be heavenly minded you know I'm like, i love i love singing songs about heaven and yeah, i too. make songs 
the time to the Lord, and I sing to him. And I sing to the Trinity. I just want to throw that out there. Um, I sing to the Trinity. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe, maybe, um, maybe, maybe we'll get to do another video. This is like a testimony video, but maybe we'll get to do another video where we get together and we sing, we sing a song together. Um, I'm a soprano. Are you an alto or a soprano? I'm an I'm an alto. Oh I well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, we could have fun singing together. And the thing too is, you know, I mean, I just don't. I, I mean, we really don't know when it's going to be, when the rapture's going to be. But you know, for me, um, I have to. I just have to keep my mind on that. You know, this life is short. This life, you know, is a vapor. And that we really are in the heavenly realms when we're praying and, you know, whether we're praying in tongues, whether we're praying words, we understand we're in the heavenly realm. And like you said, you're putting on your armor and, you know, it's a spiritual, it's a spiritual battle and, you know, but we're alive. We're alive in Christ. You know, I, I, I was like, I like, I witness all the time. God send these people to me and I'm witnessing to them. And, you know, it's sad. You'll look into their eyes and you can just see that they're dead. They're spiritually dead. There's no life in their, you know, oh, in their windows know. to the soul. There's just no life there, but it's so, we have to yeah. keep on, you know, I'm, I'm always handing them. Like I had, you know, I had this guy and I, my mission field is probably different. I don't know. Is I mean, in the Bible belt, everybody, everybody thinks they're saved. It's like, you know, oh, I grew up in the church. Oh, yeah, I got I got born. In, well, I got saved when I was eight and I got baptized. And then you start to talk to them about how they're living now. And they're not they're completely not saved. Never have been. Um, so yours is a little different to actually being uh, uh, being saved and walking away and then having to come back. But uh, most people just plain aren't saved. <laughs> and, you know, they haven't had an experience um, well, most people here are very secular. There's very few church people. Oh, okay. So it's a pretty secular society. The wow. church is pretty, um, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, I mean, the churches I've experienced uh, haven't been really on fire. I am starting to attend one now, oh, but I do have to go. Yeah. So. Well, and I'm, oh, so God bless you. Thanks so much for doing that. I wish we could talk for two more minutes because that would be 144. And then I could say, Jesus is Lord, which I always do. But I really appreciate it. And, um, you know, and I know that you will be very careful if you are going to a church to make sure that they are not, um, not supportive of divorce or marriage. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank All you right. Thanks, time. Andrea. It was fun talking to you. <laughs> Hope to get to talk to you soon. Yeah. Bye bye. Yeah.